It's the Halloween episode of Recovery This Week. It's Recovery This Week. I'm David Frank. And I'm Shauna mckenna Vic. And it's Halloween. Happy Halloween, Shauna. Happy Halloween. Oh my gosh, I just stopped at the drugstore to pick up candy. I was out doing errands and my husband said, don't forget to get candy because I forgot to get candy. Do you know how much Halloween candy is this year? Yeah, it's like a mortgage on your house. If you have a house mm-hmm. to give Halloween, it's a mortgage. On it. We it's have an several extra mortgage bags. Payment. Yes. Yeah. Do you get mm-hmm. trick or treaters there? Uh, we well, every house is on two acres or an acre and a half, so it's quite far to walk between houses. But we still get trick or treaters. We just don't nice. get them the way you might get them in a smaller neighborhood. But we get a few. But this year, I you know normally I'm like a junkie, like give out tons, give out tons. This year we'll be like, well, here's a few pieces of candy. And then when it gets later, I'll give out lots, but oh my gosh, I can't get over how much the, but the best buy was at my drugstore, two for one bags of the like 30 pieces, the smaller pieces. So once you add up the bags to make a big bag, you, um, you're still paying less than the $20. Well, I have to tell you, keeping bag. with the alcoholic theme, I've decided to give out mini vodka bottles and marijuana oh, chews, you know, CBD great chews. Idea. So, yeah, great I thought idea. that would be. I well, thought I thought I'd make, um, I thought I'd make chocolate chip cookies and give those out, but you know, no, you they can't would do be, that. but you're not, I know, but you can't give out vodka and gummies either. Unless they're your neighbors and you know them very, very well, that's creep factor. You can't do the cookies, you can't do the bread, you can't do any of the baked goods. I, know, I used to I get know rice krispie treats oh remember yeah, that? that would be good that yeah. was good yeah. that was good Caramel my first apples. addiction sugar my first addiction sugar yeah. uh, uh well halloween me. shauna i i you know a lot going on this week the world is kind of crazy we got an election next week there's all this different stuff going on in the world and you know people are wondering you know hey how do i stay sober in halloween a lot of people also are struggling with other things besides just staying sober. Could be mental health issues, things like that. So we thought we'd right, chat but, about that I mean, today. let's talk about sober and Halloween and the election yeah. coming and, you know, just general unrest. It feels like a lot. It just feels like a lot is going on right now. And it's probably because it's the election and people are very polarized on their viewpoints, unfortunately, um, you know. And I actually think more people are drinking more. And so when it comes to how do I stay sober on Halloween, I think we also have to address, and what if you get drunk on Halloween and you got drunk two days ago and you got drunk three days before that and you got drunk three days before that, you know, how do you know when to say when, or maybe because Halloween's coming up and you're like, I'm so looking forward to getting hammered. And then you wake up with the shame and the guilt on November mm-hmm. the 1st. Mm-hmm. How do you get to the point where you're like, wait a second, I want to take a look at my drinking, or maybe I don't want to take a look at my drinking or people have mentioned to me that I might want to take a look at my drinking. You know, it's tough. It's real tough. It it is a tough situation to be in. Well, you know why I think Halloween is a big drinking holiday, personally, because what you're talking about is this rise of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, one of the things that's interesting is because, you know, I never did this in my past, you know, my past year sober. But now that, you know, we're doing the show and I've got Recovered Life TV, I'm looking at all the headlines that come out that have addiction Mm -hmm. and sobriety in them and alcoholism in them, Mm -hmm. drug addiction. And you know, what's interesting is there's this huge correlation between anxiety and alcoholism. I I know there was with me, right? But I think this is a big time because this really is the kickoff to the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And it is, you're exactly right. Yeah. And you know, and this year, especially with You know, not everybody is doing great financially this year. People are still Mm -hmm. recovering from COVID and there's been a lot of layoffs. And this is, this is an inflation. I mean, we started out with how much a freaking bag of candy costs. Exactly. And, you know, it's like, I think, I think this is a lot of times when people start to see that they have a drinking problem, or if you're Mm -hmm. in recovery like us, 
you have to kind of double down. Like, honestly, it's cold here in L.A., which is a rarity. Yeah. Uh, it's like seeing Bigfoot. But I didn't really want to go to a meeting last night. I wanted to just kind of stay in and not do it. But I went because, you know, it is really the kickoff to the holidays. And I'm going to be mm -hmm. out and about. And not that I'm worried about it, but I like to have that buffer. You know, that buffer. When I'm out around people that are drinking or in situations. Sure. Around, you want to be spiritually fit. You want to yeah. be working your program. You want to be engaged. You want to be engaged in your recovery as opposed to being on the sidelines or just being an onlooker to recovery, right? So you want Absolutely. to- Absolutely. You know, because it's not just to prepare for the holidays. You want to have a full life, you know, and being engaged in our own recovery is how we create that life worth living. What I'm seeing too, Damon, and one of the challenges is mental health. So let's just take- someone who may be a moderate drinker or not a drinker or doesn't use substances. And they're really struggling, like you said, with the anxiety, with depression, with all this stuff, how that can really play into using substances then to self-medicate and then the substance use takes off. Well, what if people knew, did you know there's plenty of treatment centers that have that are residential treatment for mental health. I mean, mm. we talk about going to rehab a lot for alcohol, yeah. drugs, substances. Yeah. Do you know they, they have treatment centers that are primary mental health that you can go no, and do a yes. residential stay? You know, I learned that in the last couple of years, you know, by interviewing a lot of the people who work at those. And um, it is, you know, and I think it's so great because for two reasons, Shauna, and I'd love your, I'd love your opinion on this because- sure. One of the things is, is that rarely do you see now, once you educate yourself about what is mental health, like, and mm -hmm. how does that intersect with addiction? Rarely do you see people now in meetings when I go out, not that I'm a doctor or, you know, giving diagnosis, right. but you could see, wow, this is a mental health issue that's mm -hmm. coupled with an addiction issue that it doesn't mean that the addiction issue is any less. Right, any less right. important, but it's not the only thing. And I also think, and I'm just going to just throw a bomb in here. I also think that that is one of the reasons why traditional 12 step uh, groups sometimes get a bad rap of like, well, it didn't work for me. It actually worked on the addiction side, on the addiction but the side, mental yeah. health side was so bad or got to a place that was so unmanageable for the person that it 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 made them come back to the uh, you know the alcohol and drug addiction, the, right? Well, now in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, it says that we do go to see doctors for other issues, right? So if someone says AA didn't work for them, they might have missed that part too. That you know it's okay to see doctors, therapists, psychiatrists for other issues too. I mean, yes, a. AA and the, tw the or 12 step program really works on the spiritual uh, nature of the disease. And I will tell you that it's a, it's the 12 steps. I am a big believer in it because I hit a very low rock bottom and it was the message and it is the program that got me sober and keeps mm -hmm. me sober. And, but I have a therapist, I have a psychiatrist, I have marriage. I see a marriage therapist because we yeah. like to keep our marriage healthy. I'm going to go, um, I'm actually going to engage a new type of therapist for somatic experiencing. We can talk about that because I feel a little disconnected from my emotions. I must need to do yeah. some more work. So I, it breaks my heart that people might have left AA because they were still struggling or had co-occurring diagnoses. And most residential treatment centers do take in co-occurring and they recognize the link between mental health and substance use. And, you know, is it the chicken or the egg, right? I think that's what you were, what your point is. And so what I'm saying too, is, you know, if you're just struggling with mental health, you know, we meet people in my profession of, you know, interventionists, case managers, addiction professionals, we can help get you treatment for your mental health. So it doesn't explode into a substance use and you're co-occurring. There's, there are residential treatment centers for um, mental health, for trauma. You know, a lot of people suffer from complex yeah. trauma. And so there is help out there and there's practices and IOPs. We have a new uh, trauma IOP that opened up here in Raleigh. 
And um, I mean, we have lots of different IOPs, but there is help for pure mental health stuff that's not necessarily uh, co-occurring with addiction, but could lead to addiction. But there's a lot of addiction that's co-occurring with mental health. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting because, you know, one of some of the more popular episodes that we've done on the show, like looking back about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago, we did one on bipolar disorder. And it was interesting. We had a therapist on talking about bipolar disorder. Okay. And that's very, very well searched. And, you know, it's interesting because I had somebody in a 12 step program that I knew who was sober for several decades and ended up going out because of bipolar disorder, right? I know people who've gone out because, because of anxiety. Because they are the main, they stopped taking their medicine. I know a lot of people yeah, who stopped taking their medicine because yeah. they're feeling good. Then they, the um, mental health disorder, the bipolar disorder kicks up and they start using it again. Yes. Well, this very... person didn't even, this person wasn't even diagnosed with it, but had oh. had all of these things that had gone on, you know? And this is one of the things that I've been saying a lot, and I kind of got a bad rap for this, honestly, and I get a lot of hate really? from this. I've got a lot of hate for my- I can't some, believe for, you ever friends. get a bad rap, Damon. Oh, I do. I always get a bad rap on stuff. But one of the things is, is that I'm going to, you know, I made a statement that, you know, 12-step groups is, aren't, isn't really effective. You know, I was told uh, that, that, that there was effective for everything. And I'm somebody who suffered from a major, you know, anxiety all through my recovery use the 12 steps. It did help with the first part of it, but ultimately it was helps outside of the room that helped me really get a grasp of that anxiety disorder and mm -hmm. really get it to a place in my life where it was manageable. And then I would say even kind of disappeared in some areas of my life. Right. Uh, right. But I, I think there's a lot of resistance and looking back, I think my resistance was you know, man, I don't want to be a triple winner here. I'm already an alcoholic. I already have to go to meetings. Yeah. And I saw other people's lives getting better in recovery. And mine was, it was, right. Sean, it was getting better. But this reoccurring theme of this anxiety disorder kept coming up every couple months and every month mm -hmm. and every week, right? And not taking action on that I think was it was a huge mistake for me. I, I had a lot of misery and suffering when I really didn't need to. No, you got to take action on it. You got to do what you have to do. I mean, like I said, I listed out my care team, right? Because I want to be mentally healthy, yeah. spiritually healthy, emotionally healthy, physically healthy. You used to have a personal trainer. You know, like we need to see all the people that can help us and we need to take the action. That's the other thing is I was talking to someone today and she said she's been in talk therapy. She, um, for the last two years and she has had some trauma from a relationship. And, uh, I said, have you done any like trauma work using any trauma modalities? Has she sent you out to see a trauma therapist to like deal with this. She said, no, I said, so you've just been doing, and I'm not a clinician, but in my mind, I'm like, well, what action are you taking? Yeah. Yeah. What action well, are you taking? We still have to take some action, right? Like it's, it's interesting, whether it's because... breath work or, you know, whatever, we do have to take some action. It, things just don't come to us by osmosis or whatever. No, I mean, but I'm calling this the big T and, you know, it's, it's a, the trauma, which is the big, if we're going to really talk about alcoholism, like in the last, you know, 90 years, let's just say since the, since the 12 steps really kind of took off, yes. it is really trauma is the big thing that they've uncovered. But it's interesting because like I did a couple episodes, a couple episodes back, I had a guy who had written a book on uh, on trauma, a Hazleton guy, you know, right. yeah. very, very tight in. And it was interesting because he was he was a huge believer in getting outside help, you know, a huge believer. Yeah. And and he talked about his experience in doing it. But he also said resolving trauma isn't necessarily going to even though it's linked to addiction is it there's no study that says that resolving the trauma is necessarily going to help your alcoholism and addiction that these are two separate and that people get this confused they think well if i can get all the mental health stuff done right if i can get a grasp on that mm -hmm. whether it's medication treatment or everything if I could do that, then all of a sudden, I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer a drug addict. I no longer have to work a program or, you know, 
or, or do anything at all. And he said, this is the big lie that people are being told. It's not that it's not tied together. It's not that there's not a correlation. It's not the holy grail, though, as far well, as could recovery. be even causation, right? Like, no, it's yes. not the holy grail. But that's what I was saying. We have to work on all these different areas all the time. Just because you're um, exercising doesn't mean you're going to lose weight. You have to exercise and diet, right? Yeah. So you have to work on trauma, whether it's capital T trauma or, you know, lowercase t trauma. We go through little mini traumas and trauma is a buzzword. Everybody says they've got trauma, you know, of some sort. And there are, I mean, we, yeah. we do, we've been exposed. In fact, everybody's got some trauma from COVID. There you go. Right. But there's lowercase T's and then there's uppercase T's violence and, you know, whatever, but you can't work on just your alcoholism and not treat that there might be correlation there might be causation and you got it you got to do both but i'm with you i don't think just resolving trauma oh and you're magically not an alcoholic anymore or suffer from substance use disorder i no i i think they're i don't think it's binary like that well you know it's interesting because i think you know speaking on this holiday theme mental health is scary it's scary for people like, you know, I don't care if you're in addiction recovery or not. It freaks people out. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, st I still think that there's a stigma around stigma, it. Stigma, huge stigma. Um, yeah. And, you know, I would say even more. But, you know, what's interesting now that I see is that addiction in mental health is kind of coming together. It used to be I know when I first got sober, those were two separate conversations Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing them as one conversation they of are. addiction yes. being a mental health disorder, as opposed to them being some separate entity, right? And and I think that that is good because we're looking at the whole person. And, you know, and I know there's a lot of people out there. I know there's a lot of people who listen to this that struggle and they're just freaked out to take any kind of action at all. I mean, what do you mm -hmm. say to those people, Sean, that are freaked? Because I was one of those people. I was like freaked. I was like, man. Like I got my hands full just with this recovery thing. I, I you know, right. well, I, I don't I mean, even want to know. If you want to feel better, you got to yeah. take some action. So, you know, find someone you can talk to. Sometimes doctors won't help, but addiction professionals can help. You know, just we can make referrals if they contact you or I. Um, but just say, you know, I'm really struggling with my mental health. And I, gosh, Google mental yes. health IOP for your, the area you live in, and you'll find some, you know, there are resources out there. That's an intensive outpatient program. You are still living at home, you're going to work. And then, you know, nine hours a week, you're going and doing group therapy and one-on-one -on -one therapy, and that can really help. Um, but there are lots of resources out there and I don't know about you, Dame, but I'm going to have to go back to the store and get more candy now because, uh, Me too. It's, we're, Me too. we're coming up on time. I hate to cut you short today, but I think Costco. I'm going to have to get more candy. I'm oh, Costco, Costco. What a great we, idea. I should have done that this week. Real quick. But, you know, we have lots, we... we have to pick up, we have to pick up where we left off on a couple of things, Damon, for next mm -hmm. week. I think we... I think it'd be good to dive further into this start of holiday season and the messages yes. that we tell ourselves, because I never thought of Halloween as starting the holiday season, but tomorrow's November. So people are already like, well, it's Thanksgiving yeah. and then it's Christmas and we lump them all together. So I want to talk about that. Um, and then also, you know, now is the right time to get help coming up. I think that that's why I'm so busy. I have so many clients, people either want to get better before mm -hmm. Christmas or they don't want their family around for Christmas, so they're calling an interventionist, yes. or it's just come to such a head because of the holiday season starting and the election and everything. So um, yeah, I'd like to pick this one up uh, again and talk a little more next week about this. And real quick, before we leave here, I want to end this episode because it is the Halloween and Halloween weekend. Boo. Your top, Your top two or three tips about staying sober during Halloween. If people are out there that are worried, you know, this might be their first Halloween sober or they've been sober for a while and they're a little freaked out. What are your top tips for people uh, for staying sober in Halloween? Well, I will tell you my first one is it's OK to miss a Halloween party if you're early in recovery. It is OK yeah. to say, you know what, I think I'm going to skip this one. That would be yeah. one tip. The other is lean into your program. 
I bet there's sober parties going on. We have to change a lot. If you're expecting to go to the same Halloween blowout, blowout where everybody is absolutely loaded by 8.30 or 9 p.m., probably not a good idea. But if you want to go, have an exit plan. Always, yeah, have an always exit plan. have an exit yeah. plan, right? All, yeah. Don't park your car in the driveway. Park your car down the street so that you can always get out. No one parks behind you. You know, always have an exit plan. And then guess what, Damon? I've been telling a couple of sponsors this. You can actually leave parties without telling people you're leaving. It's called the Irish exit. And you can just leave and not have to go around and say goodbye to everybody when they'll say, oh, no, yeah. stay. We want you to yeah. stay. We want you to stay. Oh, no, stay. Have a drink. Whatever. You can actually just quietly leave, say goodbye to the host and say, I'm just going to take off and not draw too much attention to it. So those would be my tips. Exit plan. Leave when you want or don't go. Absolutely. I'm going to throw this one into close too, is that, you know, plan the next meeting that you're going to go to if you're in 12 step and do a bumper call, call somebody before you come in and then plan to call somebody after. Yeah. So you Great have idea. something to look forward to. You've already kind of structured how that's going to go. You know yeah. that you're going to be accountable when you leave, you know, and I always found that that to be a really good thing because it keeps you kind of on track about what you want to do. But my, my final thing is relax and have a little fun. You know, yeah. no one got, you know, no one got sober so they could have a miserable friggin' life, you know, so relax, enjoy your sobriety and have a good time. And eat some candy. All right. Eat some candy. Thanks, have Damon. a good one guys. Yeah. Happy Bye. Halloween. Bye. Bye. Hey, if you like this episode, think about supporting us by becoming a recovered life plus member at recovered life TV. We're not just delivering premium recovery resources, we're empowering you with the knowledge and tools that make a real difference in the quality of your recovery. By subscribing, you gain access to ad-free content, expert insights, exclusive video and audio segments, special projects, plus so much more, all while supporting our mission to spread the recovery message far and wide. Whether you're seeking to deepen your understanding or stay updated on the latest addiction and mental health recovery trends, Recovered Life Plus is for you. Subscribe now and start living your best recovered life. Just go to recoveredlife.tv and become a Plus member today.